So, uh, when I lived here in Cuba, I was really fascinated by the food system because I was a nutritionist. And I lived here in the early 80s. That was a time when things were pretty good because the Soviet Union was still around, there was a lot of subsidies. Um, you got enough on the ration to get you through the whole month. That's not the case today. The ration is a lot smaller quantities. Um, but what people didn't have was all the things they needed to, take, to make the food taste good. Um, they didn't want salad. People were not into eating uh, raw vegetables. Um, they, they wanted tomatoes uh, for cooking. They wanted garlic. They wanted onions. They wanted the spices. And they couldn't get that anywhere. So there were a lot of complaints, and people would buy that all on the black market. So finally, uh, Fidel Castro said, okay, we're going to open up these private, these private markets and let farmers sell privately. So they opened up these markets, but the prices were really high because the farmers had a commodity that people really wanted, and they could charge whatever they wanted for them. And so people started complaining. Can you believe they want $5 for a head of garlic? This is counter-revolutionary. This is terrible. <laughs> and the complaints just got louder and louder and louder. And so then Fidel Castro said, okay, we're shutting down all the farmers' markets. They said that the people who were selling were not farmers, which of course is true, because how could you be a farmer and spend all day selling? So they arrested all the people who were selling in the markets, saying that they were counter-revolutionaries. Um, I, at that time, was, I was writing articles for a solidarity paper in the United States, and I wrote about this and said that it was a terrible decision on the part of the government to shut down these farmers' markets and declare that all these sellers were counter-revolutionary and put them in prison because they had goods that people really needed. Wouldn't it have been better to put some kind of price caps on them or do something that would uh, allow the people to keep getting the product but uh, not at those exorbitant prices? Well, when I went back to the U.S. Uh, with that article, I came back to to Cuba, uh, somehow they had found it and translated into Spanish, took me to the intelligence um, uh, uh, ministry and interrogated me for, oh, it must have been about 12 hours about why I wrote that it was a bad decision on the part of Fidel Castro. And um, then they took me to the place I was living, got all my neighbors around, and told them that I was counter-revolutionary for having written that. So that was the beginning of my uh, wow. uh, difficulties around these food issues. Um, but I became so interested that I ended up doing a lot of research and wrote a book called Food and Revolution, No Free Lunch, Food and Revolution in Cuba Today. I also wrote a book called The Greening of the Revolution, which was about the transition to organic agriculture. Um, which was really fascinating, done, as Cecily said, by necessity, but done in a really brilliant way, using the best of the minds of the Cuban people and the universities and setting up all of these uh, really very uh, brilliant experimental stations. Uh, so on the background, when the revolutionary started, uh, most of the farms were private farmers. Fidel Castro saw that as the petty bourgeoisie um, individualists, and that those people really would be better off joining, uh, uh, starting state farms uh, where the production would go directly to the state and then to the people.